Hi guys and girls, Emma again, welcome back to the spare room. This is something that I've been a little bit aware of for a little while and it's got worse, uh, this locomotive. The wheels aren't quartered properly and one of the wheels was loose and everything moves and I had it timed way out and the, the, stand, the air pressure popped the whole thing around a bit and jammed it up again. So what I've done is taken these wheels and, and pressed off one, one side of all of them, which they weren't particularly tight. Um, borrowed a press and just, just took them off. And I've cleaned them up so that they're sort of a nice slip fit there. And I'm going to run a bit of Loctite in them and quarter them up right. What I've done, and the way, way I've set this up, is... I've measured the centre of the axle, or measured the top of the axle and divided it by half the diameter and found the centre and then made a gauge box stack that's that's just exactly right under that crank pin there. Now, that's not at 90 degrees there, but if we set this other side up with a little square, we'll move this back here so that we can, without knocking our gauge box stack off, and set this side up with a little square. Let's have a look here. On the centre. That's going to be pretty close. Because they're both offset the same amount. It doesn't matter what size the crank pins are. Um, there have been people tell me that... LBFC designs are a problem because all the crank pins are a different size. Really not a huge deal. Uh, this one's offset exactly the same amount off center as this one. And if I use this same rig to set up a different axle set with a different size crank pin, it's going to be exactly the same because it's going to be offset the same on both sides. So that's how I'm doing it. And I've got this one right and I'm going to let it set. Hopefully I've got the right hand side leading and I've got the crank pins leading the way they should be too which is all a little bit scientific and complicated and you consult the drawings and have a bit of a look and double check and triple check and triple check it but so far we've got this right I think so let's have a bit more of a look when we've got it all back together there's a lot of there's a lot of fairly tedious jobs in restoring a loco like this or even in building a loco these are the valve chest studs. They're 532 Whitworth. And someone's gone to all the trouble of making them, but they're a bit ugly, the threads. So, just a matter of chucking them up. And running a 532 die. Over them, the easiest way to do that's in the lathe, I guess. I've got all these cleaned up and what I've done is lock tighter the nuts on there. A friend reminded me of this old Keith Appleton trick. So all the nuts are in the right spot so they should all screw down and look the same. And they should come out. This is a bit of a nuisance because when I take the steam chest cover off, I've got to take the nuts off and then I've got to take the studs out to get them off. So that's a bit of a pain. What I've done is lock tied the nuts on, and when they're dry, uh, we can just unscrew them, and they still look like studs, and they're all going to screw back in the same spot. So, pretty happy about that. It's another little job done. So, what I've done is got all this back together on this side. Um, the steam chest just sitting there. I've got to put the nuts in, the studs in, and the, the gaskets in yet. Uh, but everything turns over and opens and closes where it should be on this side, which I'm really happy about. That's not shabby at all. I really, I really like the way that closes, that turns over and and does everything it should do. So that's about ready to go back together. I think cleaned everything up. There's four little plugs to go in the top there. 
as such on each side, two on each side. And these front ones are actually cheese head screws. Um, bit ugly, I've cleaned them up. But there's not much else you can do about that because this is round on top here. So what I'm sort of thinking is when they go together, they might get dome heads in them or I might make some special screws so they don't stick it out. And then when we put the cladding round, you won't see them anyway. So that's the go there. It's all back together, everything's running. This is probably going to be the last video on this locomotive for a little while. It's going to go back on the shelf now, it's up to this level until I can get it up to a track and sort of say, hey look, what do we need to do to take it further? Or, to be honest, uh, this chassis is 10 times better than it was when I got it. I've learned a lot. It's a fairly big loco. I'm half sort of a mind to, to move it on to someone else who can use it or, or can enjoy it or can finish it. Uh, my thinking on this is that we're sort of $1,500 away from having a, a finished three and a half inch gauge loco that I'm never gonna have a track for. It's not really pocket size. Um, it's got fairly long legs, so it needs a, a decent long track. And it's capable of doing some real work. But, having said that, I'm mindful that there are still things that need to be done to this chassis. And that in some places it's not as perfect as I would have built it. So. Mostly because if I was building it myself, I would have built it some of the bits three or four times to get them right. There's still a little bit of a twist in the frames. Um, some of the fits and tolerances aren't real good. And some of the finish on some of the parts aren't real good. But, it's a nice serviceable operating loco. And I think it'll run. Let's run it in forward if we're slipping back to reverse. Here I can press it pop in. Now it's it's running in reverse, it's not perfect. It'll settle down. What you've got to be mindful of is that this doesn't have a flywheel like a stationary engine or a or a traction engine. So the inertia comes from moving along the track and that's what keeps it going. So this is a bit jerky because basically there's no inertia in it. It's just the wheels turning. That exhaust beat's not quite perfect in reverse, so it needs some timing work. Whether we shorten one side of one valve or whatever it is, I don't know what the problem is, but I guess if I played with it enough, I would. Is there a locomotive in my future? Absolutely. Um, is it this locomotive? Really not sure yet, in 12 months. Um, anyway, I've got time to get in today and make it, put this away on the shelf and clean everything up and have a clean workshop again and ready to go again. So thanks for watching, thanks for your patience with this. I know it's been two months of, of locomotive updates that weren't really planned or expected and at this point I'm going to put it back on the shelf and we're going to have a think about what we're going to do with it because it's running pretty sweet. I'm pretty pleased with that. So thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, be kind to each other and more soon guys and girls. Oh,